Welcome back to the most amazing top 10. My name is Danny Burke and I do have to say guys, I have overlooked paintings a lot in my life. I'm more of a music kind of guy, I guess. But even I have seen some of these paintings that we're gonna talk about and most of you guys will have too, even if you don't think you have, because these are the top 10 most famous paintings. Coming out at number 10, we have Scream by Edvard Munch. Painted in 1893, it's one of the most recognizable images to this day. Scholars have spent over 100 years debating who or what the screamer is, but Edvard himself said it was simply a scream he felt passing through nature. Either way, words aren't really needed to explain the horror in this figure's face, something every human can relate to. Perhaps that's why it has entered pop culture over the years and been parodied time and time again. Okay, moving on to number 9 now, we have The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. It was painted in the final years of the 15th century by the legendary da Vinci after he was commissioned to paint a work on the wall of the Santa Maria del Grazi Church in Milan. The scene depicts the last meal between Jesus and his 12 disciples. As he tells them, he knows one of them will betray him, leading to his crucifixion. Now, spoiler alert, it's Judas. Yeah, I'm sorry if anyone hadn't finished the Bible yet. Now, over the past 500 years since then, it has been loved, praised, damaged by accident, damaged on purpose, repaired properly, and then repaired badly. Even the church that housed it was bombed during World War II. Rough. Despite this, The Last Supper survived, and if you want to see how embedded it has become in popular culture, check out all the TV shows that have done a Last Supper picture. It goes on and on and on. It's just what Da Vinci had hoped for. Next up at number eight, we have The Girl with the Pearl airing by Johannes Vermeer. Now I'd love to tell you exactly what year this was painted, but the experts aren't sure. Somewhere around 1665 though, but they don't know who commissioned it. And that kind of mystery is actually what has driven a lot of the fascination with this painting over the years. Why is this 17th century European girl wearing exotic clothing and a Turkish turban? Is it Johannes' daughter? And as the title might suggest, what is the deal with that pearl earring that seems to draw people's eyes to it so much? These questions have led to books based on the painting and even a movie starring Scarlett Johansson. Wait a minute, Johansson Vermeer and Scarlett Johansson. Conspiracy theory, huh? Probably not at all. All right, coming in at the number seven spot now, we're gonna jump forward a few hundred years for The Son of Man by René Magritte. Painted in 1964, it's become one of the most iconic paintings of the late 20th century. It's actually a self-portrait where René wanted to explore the concept of humans wanting to see something that's hidden. Well, this is what he actually looks like if you really wanna know what's behind the apple, but that's not the point. The point is, if you wanna get really deep, you could say this painting shows why people love all the art we see in this video. It's about uncovering the hidden meanings, feelings, and emotions in our lives. Maybe I should be an art critic. Or maybe I should just get on with the video and move on to our number six. And we've got The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. From surreal to surreal now, Salvador Dali is well known for his mind and physics bending paintings, and this is perhaps the best example of it. Painted in 1931, it pretty much sums up what Dali and the whole surrealist movement were all about. Breaking down our notions of what is fixed or changing, real or not, hard or soft, and for most of us, time seems like probably the most fixed thing in existence, always marching in one direction, never changing. Yet here, Dali shows it melting in the hot sun like cheese. Dali would go on to create many more paintings over the years to come, but this was the one that actually made him famous at just 28 years old. It was the first the world really knew of him, and it helped set the tone for all the surreal paintings to come. Okay, coming in at number five now, we have The Starry Night by Vincent. Vincent van Gogh by Vincent van Gogh by Vincent van Goggy and Vincent van Gogh. I feel like there's a million pronunciations out there, so yeah, just take your pick. Now, sometimes people overuse the word iconic a little bit too much, but I think this painting might deserve that word. Painted in June 1889 in France, it's thought to be one of the best, if not the best, work done by the Dutch painter. Vincent painted it from the window of an insane asylum he had checked himself into the month before, and it was from this tortured artist that such an amazing piece came from. The focus is on the star-filled sky above the sleepy village below, but while that concept had been done before and and since, nobody depicted it in quite the way Vincent did. Instead of the stars and the landscape being static, critics say the swirling nature of the painting made it come alive on the canvas. As with others on this list, it's since entered mainstream culture and become very famous. I even went to a Halloween party once with my girlfriend as Vincent and the Starry Night. She did all the painting. 
I'm terrible at painting. And moving on to number four now, we have American Gothic by Grant Wood. American Gothic is an American classic. Painted during the Great Depression in 1930, it came to be known as a symbol of American spirit and resistance. That no matter how tough things are, Americans will stay steadfast. Now, although the pair in this painting look like they're from the colonial era, they're actually based on real life models. Grant modeled the woman on his sister and the man on his dentist. Here they are standing with the actual painting. But that was pretty trippy. The original inspiration came from Grant seeing a gothic window on what he thought was such a flimsy looking house in Iowa. And you can actually even visit that very house today and get a picture outside that house. Just make sure you look bloody miserable. Next up at number three now, we have Guernica by Pablo Picasso. This 1937 painting is perhaps the most well-known anti-war painting of all time. It depicts the bombing of Guernica that happened that year where a reported 1,654 Basque civilians, mainly women and children, were killed during the Spanish Civil War when the Spanish fascists requested that the Nazis bomb the town. For every person to see this painting, there has been a different interpretation of it, but one thing that people tend to agree on is how it shows the absolute brutality of war. The broken up images, disembodied faces, flailing limbs and colourless canvas really show how surrealism can reflect the harsh realities of the world, even the horrors of bombs and wars. Guernica helped bring worldwide attention to that war and served as a reminder for every war to come, even the second world war that will begin just two years later. Coming in now at number two, we have the creation of Adam by Michelangelo. Now perhaps part of this painting is actually more more famous than the painting itself. This part, the oh so close touching moment between God and humanity is the central focus of this piece on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. It was painted in about 1512 and is said to reflect the line in the Bible referring to God creating Adam and subsequently humanity itself. Now we're supposed to be seeing the moment before God touches humanity and brings it into existence. It's one of a number of paintings like this on the Sistine Chapel ceiling that took some four years to finish. A lot of the pictures on our list have been parodied in modern times, but perhaps the creation of Adam might be the number one for that. But it's not the number one on our list, because that's what we've reached now, and that spot has to go to the one, the only, Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. It was once described as the best known, the most visited, the most written about, the most sung about, and the most parodied work of art in the world. It was painted sometime between 1503 and 1506, and if you strip away all the fame behind it, it seems quite simple. A woman in front of a landscape background, but as with most art, there are layers to it. If you talk to an art expert, they will rave about how technically brilliant each brush stroke is and the harmony in the picture, but for the average person, like me or you, they are drawn to the questions behind it. Who is she and why is she smiling? Well, they think it's Lisa del Giasondo, daughter of a wealthy silk merchant who commissioned da Vinci to paint a piece for their new home. Not a bad painting for a new home, I take that. Well, little did he know, it would eventually come to be the most famous painting probably of all time, to the point where you probably see more parodies of this painting than the actual painting itself. Honestly, I could do a whole video on just that one painting. 30 seconds really doesn't do it justice, and the same goes for all the paintings actually on this list, but which one was your favorite? Did we miss any good ones out? Can any of you guys paint very well? I'm personally terrible at painting, but then again, I haven't actually tried it since I was about eight, so that's probably why. As ever, guys, thanks for watching Most Amazing Top 10. Now, do make sure you're subscribed for our daily videos. My name is Danny Burke, and I'll see all you guys in the next one.